15 weeks ago, I decided to commit to the hardest physical challenge of my life, running a marathon under two hours and 15 minutes. On October 8th, 2023, I ran the Chicago Marathon. If you knew me, you would know that I've been an endurance runner longer than I've been a real estate investor and content creator combined. So how did I get here? Let me give you some context here. I ran my first marathon in Philadelphia in 2008. After that race, I was in so much pain that I thought I would never run a marathon again. But 15 years later, I've completed a total of 10 full marathons in three continents. Now, I can't imagine my life without running marathons. It's taught me valuable lessons to be a better business person, a better real estate investor, and a better version of myself in general. So in this episode, I'll share the 10 most important lessons I learned about business from running 10 marathons. And you will find out if I achieve my goal of sub 250 at the Chicago Marathon by the end. If you're new here, my name is Shu. On this channel, I talk about Japan, real estate investing, financial freedom. Today, I'm also talking about running. If you enjoy the content on my channel, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button below. It helps the channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get right into it. Lesson number one, if you fail to prepare, you're prepared to fail. Whether you're doing a marathon, interviewing for your dream company, pitching your business idea to angel investors or opening a new retail shop, you have to be prepared. This doesn't mean just doing your research on the company you wish to work for running more miles and writing a well thought out business plan. I'm talking about planning how many miles you're going to run every week, when you're doing your speed workouts, at what speed, what time you're doing your long runs, and every detail. When I gave a TED talk a few years ago, I practiced to the point where I memorized every single line I've scripted by heart. If you want to succeed in the marathon and business, you must prepare to succeed. You can't wing it in the marathon or business. If you show up at the start line of a marathon without having run anything over 19 miles or 30K, you're guaranteed to hit the wall at the end. Of course, you're not guaranteed to succeed no matter how hard you work. But if you want to succeed, do so much work in advance to the point that it's unreasonable for you to not succeed. All right, it is 5 a.m. Game time. Uh, two and a half hours till Chicago Marathon. Um, 4.30, got myself ready, and just got myself my first coffee in four days, five days. I'm gonna be fully caffeinated, ready to go. Lesson number two, if you're not willing to endure the process, you will never become the version of yourself you want to become. Marathon training is a long process. I usually start my training program 13 weeks out of the program, but this doesn't mean I start running then. I start the pre-training program about seven to eight weeks before that so I can start the training program at the level I want. So when I sign up for a marathon, I start my whole process about 20 weeks or five months out, and that's how long it takes to perform at the level I wanna perform. I've been running one full marathon a year for the last few years, so I dedicate nearly half the year to training. The process takes a lot of time and there's a lot of emotional and physical pain. Just like starting a new business, opening a store, and launching a new product. Do I love every part of this process? No. There are many days I don't even want to run. Maybe it's too cold outside. I'm sore from the session yesterday. Or I'm just tired. But I show up to every training session because I'm committed to enduring the whole process, no matter how I feel. If you're not getting the results you want in business, likely you're not doing the work that's required. Did you make and post content today? Did you reach out to your leads? Did you make offers? Did you deliver on your promises with your customers? You pay in time and pain for the person you want to become in running and in business. Hard times are you footing the bill today for the trades you want to have tomorrow. Hard people don't come from easy times. Hard times are opportunities to give yourself proof that even this couldn't stop you. Lesson number three, great success requires greater sacrifice. If you're training for a marathon and want to do well, you have to do your long runs. For my Chicago Marathon training, I had eight sessions of long runs that consisted of minimum of 90 miles or 30 kilometers. One of them was a 26 miler or 42K. These runs take a very long time, like two to three hours, and you have to make time for them. There's no way around it. If I feel sluggish, it's hard for me to run at the pace I need to run in these tough sessions. And that means 
I need to be well rested, hydrated, and fueled. Going through marathon training forces me to be crystal clear on my priorities, family, work, and rest. Not that I drink much, but I cut out alcohol when I start my training because I usually feel sluggish the next day when I have alcohol. I also cut out watching TV because it's a time waster for me and I'd much rather go to bed before 10 p.m. so I can get seven to eight hours of sleep to recover my body and mind. If you wanna run faster, make more money, or have a bigger impact on your business than the average person, you have to be willing to stop what the average person does, like sitting on the couch, drinking beer, and watching Netflix. If you're anything like me, the pain of not living the best version of yourself far exceeds the pain of sacrificing instant gratification. You have to learn to do things you hate to do the things you love. No payoffs come without sacrifice. All right, here we go. Dropping off my bag. I'm not gonna take my iPhone, uh, my phone today. So I'll record some after the race. All right, wish me luck. Lesson number four. No one can stop you but you. I'm 6'1", or 186 centimeters in height. I'm considered tall in my home country of Japan. So when I started to pick up endurance running, I had multiple people telling me tall people can't run fast. They would tell me I shouldn't be a distance runner. I should be a swimmer instead. Well, yeah, I mean, you don't see world-class runners who are above six feet. Not that I'm trying to be a world-class runner, but that didn't stop me from running faster marathons. I just kept running. In my sixth marathon, I broke three hours for the first time, and I broke 255 in my ninth marathon. There will be haters along the way. They'll try to put you down, whatever the reason is, but if you can't ignore the haters, you're literally unstoppable because only you can stop yourself. Like me, maybe you've made countless mistakes in your career and you feel like you wanna stop pursuing your big goals, but don't let those mistakes stop you from achieving your goals. Because if you don't quit, you can't lose. You can choose to become unstoppable. Lesson number five, don't just do your best, do what it takes. If you wanna achieve something exceptional, just doing your best isn't necessarily going to get you there, especially in the beginning. You have to do the work that's required to get there. For example, my goal was to break three hours for my fourth marathon, which was in Taipei, Taiwan. I trained very hard for it and gave my absolute best, and I finished it at 309. It was the most physically painful race I've ever finished to this day. In hindsight, I was undertrained. I just didn't run enough to go sub three. For my fifth marathon, which was in Melbourne, Australia, I trained harder this time and again gave my best on the race day. I got 302. My best wasn't enough. In my sixth marathon, which was in Shonan, Japan, I trained harder and gave my best on the race day again. I kept up with the three hour pacers for most of the race and I finished it with a 258. Now I know what it takes to break three hours in a marathon. I've broken three hours in every marathon I've run since then. Sometimes doing your best isn't enough, and that's okay. Your best just needs to get better. The question is, how do you know what it takes? First, you have to know the input-output equation. You have to figure out what primary actions you have to take that will continue to stack up over time. For example, to break the three hour mark in marathons, I needed to average between 62 and 72 miles or 100K and 115 kilometers per week. Run a half marathon under 123 a month before the marathon and do a minimum of five runs that are longer than 90 miles or 30 kilometers. Study the people who have achieved what you want. Make a plan for yourself and track the important metrics daily. I have this notebook for running and I kept track of the metrics that I think are important how long it took me, um, how many kilometers, how many miles I ran, how fast I went, average heart rate, maximum heart rate, outside temperature. This gives me a good idea of if I'm on or off track to achieving my goal. I track everything here. And one thing I emphasize is that don't just focus on the studying part. Spend more time actually doing the work. You don't have information overload, you have execution underload. Volume is the answer and time is the ingredient. You just need to do a lot for a very long time.
Lesson number six, only listen to the opinions of people who have larger dreams for your life than you do. This is the hard truth. Unless you want to have a mediocre life, you don't want to listen to most people's opinions because most people have a mediocre life and that's why they're average. There's nothing wrong with being average. I just don't want mediocrity and I don't think you do either. The chances are most people haven't achieved what you want to achieve. So why would you listen to their advice? For example, some people to this day tell me to stop running so much because it's not good for my joints and my physical health. And I think they have good intentions because they don't want me to get injured, but they haven't even run a marathon. So what do they know about staying healthy as a marathon runner? For this marathon training, I ran quite a bit more than I usually do. I averaged over 70 miles per week and had a couple of 85 plus miles per week. I didn't get injured or sick. It's not about how much you run that gets you injured or sick. It's more about overstretching yourself when you haven't had enough recovery time. The same as in business, don't take advice from people who haven't done the big shit that you want to do, including your parents and your old friends. It took me so long to realize this, but most people don't want the best version of you. They want the version of you that best serves them. You have to define what the best version of you looks like and surround yourself with people who truly support you to become that person. All right, it's eight days out of Chicago Marathon 2023 and today I'm doing my final speed workout uh, 10k trial to see if I got the speed. I'm gonna try to go 36 minutes and 30 seconds today on this track where I can't really see anything. It's still super dark. It's just after 6 a.m. and really foggy. So we'll see how it goes. It's super dark. I don't know if you can see. I'm right, just finishing my warm up. And I'm gonna do 25 laps on this track for a 10K trial. Just finished the 10K trial, eight dates to go for Chicago. My target was 36 minutes and 30 seconds. And I did uh, 36 minutes and 24 seconds though. So I feel pretty good about that. It was difficult, but since I put it out there, I felt like I had to just finish. I thought about quitting many times, but I'm, I'm glad that I didn't. And yeah, finally the sun's out. Uh, I'm doing just a lap of cool down and I'll hit to work. Lesson number seven, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Hard work multiplied by consistency beats talent every single time. There's no shortcut to success. You just have to do the work over and over, even if it feels boring. Extraordinary accomplishments come from doing ordinary things for extraordinary periods. Lazy people or people with talent who don't work very hard do a little work and think that they should be winning. But winners work as hard as possible and still worry they're being lazy. Work smart, work hard stay consistent. On a long enough time horizon, it's unreasonable for you to not achieve your goal. This is, this is the trail that I've been training on uh, for my long runs. It's, the fall is here, it's beautiful. There's no cars, just runners, bikers, and walkers. I'm at 5.5 miles now. Uh, feeling okay. Still pretty tired from yesterday's 10k time trial so i'm just gonna keep an easy pace about uh seven between 7 30 and 7 45 and see how i feel towards the end and if i can do a tempo a few miles of tempo lesson number eight integrity without it nothing works. Integrity is doing what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And if you don't follow through, you clean up the mess by making a new commitment and following through. It's keeping promises to others and yourself consistently. And that's how you build confidence in everything you do. Training for a sub 250 marathon with a toddler and a newborn meant I had limited time to myself. So I usually run in the morning before everyone in my family wakes up. If I need to wake up by 5.15 a.m. for a hard session, I need a good night's sleep. So I put in my calendar to go to bed by 10.15. So I get seven hours of sleep 
at least. It's stacking these small wins every day that gave me the confidence to conquer the workout every day. If you keep snoozing your alarm in the morning, you broke a promise you made to yourself the night before, and you're starting a new day with an L loss. When you stack these L's in your scorecard, not only are you disrespecting your word, but you're also creating an environment that's hard to build confidence in. Without integrity, nothing will work. Integrity is the essence of everything successful. For 18 weeks leading up to the Chicago Marathon, there was only one day out of 126 days that I didn't run. The day my daughter was born, which was August 1st. Every other day, I ran because I promised myself I would stay consistent. Being consistently good beats occasionally great. Lesson number nine, you don't make it. You just enter a new league as the smallest member. I ran my very first marathon in three hours and 35 minutes. I never thought I would be a sub three marathon runner. 10 years and five marathons later, I broke three hours for the first time. I thought I finally made it. I became a fast marathoner, I thought. But being fast is relative. I might be fast for 97% of the runners out there, but there are so many faster runners than me. At the Chicago Marathon this year, I went sub 250 for the first time. A time I didn't think was possible for me to run a marathon in when I broke three hours for the first time five years ago. And I finished 1,169th place overall. There were over 1,000 runners who finished before me. They are always and will be faster runners than you. And in business, there are always and will be people who have a bigger business and make more money than you, no matter how good you become. And that's okay. It's a constant reminder to stay humble and continue to get better than your current best every single day. Because I think what we want in life is progress. All right, I just finished the marathon, Chicago Marathon. Finished with a PR 248.34. I was going for 248.30, so I'm super happy. I shaved off uh, almost six minutes off of uh, my previous PR. So, yeah, oh man, it was a really fast course and I trained really hard for it. Super happy. All right, thanks for your support. Lesson number 10. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. What if the entire point of life is to figure out just how much you're capable of. In business, maybe it's leaving your nine to five to pursue entrepreneurship full time. In relationships, maybe it's loving someone so much like you didn't even know was possible. In fitness, maybe it's breaking your personal record in a marathon after you had your second child. Until 15 years ago, I didn't know I was capable of finishing a marathon. Until five years ago, I didn't know I was capable of running a marathon under three hours. And until last week, I didn't know I was capable of going sub 250 in a marathon. The most important business lesson marathon running has taught me is this. It taught me that we're aware of only a fraction of things we're capable of and that our limitations only exist in our minds. Maybe you're like me, far from where you wanna be, but realizing the climb is half the fun. You're not afraid of failing. You're only afraid of what other people will think about you if you fail. Don't let that stop you. Just start and keep going. I don't know, but most of all, I couldn't have done this alone. I wanna thank my wife for all the support she's given me to train for this. Having two kids at home, it's impossible to train for a marathon the way I did without her taking care of the kids at home. Most of the time, I would go for a run in the morning when everyone else was sleeping. If I was alone, I couldn't just leave a toddler and an infant sleeping by themselves at home. For this marathon prep, I also wanna thank my parents-in-law for their support in taking care of our kids. Without them, I wouldn't have been able to focus on my training sessions the way I did. Just like business, marathon running is better and more fun as a team. I'm grateful to have running buddies and mentors who hold me accountable to do the work even if I don't feel like it. And the Medicine Lake Run Group in Minneapolis for making some sessions more fun as a group. 
And a big shout out to the fellow content creators who document their running journey to inspire others. I met Eric Floberg of Floberg Runs after we both crashed our goals at the Chicago Marathon last week. He's been my biggest inspiration as a runner and also a content creator. Thanks for all that you do. So I wanted to end this episode with a quote that I heard on the podcast that I was listening to the other day. And it goes something like this. Hard is like a deck of cars that has separate components that go into what makes something hard. Simply reshuffle the deck of hard. Reshuffle the deck such that what was once impossible now looks like a small hill that is only mildly difficult instead of impossible. All you need is to start. If your goal is to finish a marathon and the farthest you've ever run is six miles and you can't imagine what it's like to run 26.2 miles, start. If your goal is to start a YouTube channel but you've never posted a video longer than 60 seconds on Instagram, just start by documenting your life and posting it every week. If your goal is to retire from your job with a portfolio of rental properties, but you've never bought a property, start with buying one house at a time. And what hard previously meant to you will be redefined by your own actions. Nobody else can make what was impossible for you possible. You just have to start. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this on my channel, please let me know by leaving a comment below. I'll see you in the next one.